Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Loveland, Colorado. This is the worship service for February 14th, 2021. And on this Valentine's Day, know that you are loved. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to worship Sunday, February 14, Valentine's Day. Do you know how to make love endure? Well, here's some children who think that maybe they have the answer. One eight-year-old said, to make love endure, don't forget your wife's name. That'll mess up the love. Another child, again, eight years old, said, be a good kisser. It might make your wife forget that you never take out the trash. <laughs> well, we know who takes out the trash in, in their family. Uh, another one said, age nine, shake your hips and hope for the best. <laughs> I have to go home and try that one. Um, age 10, this child said, I'm not rushing into love. Fourth grade is hard enough. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it is pretty hard. Uh, wait until you get into college. Um, I, I heard of one college where on the very first day of college, the dean addressed the students, pointed out some of the rules. Now, you need to know that this college had no co-ed dorms. Yeah, it was back in that daytime. And the dean said this, the female dormitory will be out of bounds for the male students. So, so to the male dormitory for the female students. Anybody caught breaking this rule will be fined $50 the first time. Anybody caught breaking the rule a second time will be fined $150. And if you're caught a third time, it will be a hefty fine of $350. Are there any questions? One guy raised his hand. He said, uh, yeah, how much for a season pass? <laughs> Oh, yes, I remember those days. We hope that you're going to have a, a wonderful Valentine's Day if you're watching this on Sunday. 
This Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday, or sometimes known as Fat Tuesday. We've got some special music for you this morning, Ragtime Rhythm Band. They're going to be celebrating Shrove Fat Tuesday uh, with uh, one or two of their selections. Hold on, I think you're going to enjoy it. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. It's the first day of the beginning of Lent. We invite you to join us at the church outside at the Tree of Life Labyrinth for a time of reflection and a time of giving on Ash Wednesday. February 17, from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, our Family Outreach Committee, as well as the Missions Committee, are teaming up to collect food for the community kitchen. Now, we're asking for specific items for the community kitchen. All of the details are on the window. The window is on the website. The window is our newsletter that we send out to all of our, our constituents and members. But it's also on the website, fumcloveland.com. I think that the service outside this Ash Wednesday promises to be a meaningful event. Hope to see you there. We'll be getting back into the building soon, I hope. And we want to be changing a few things when we get back in, starting with worship. Uh, we, be, we may be making some fairly big changes. We'd like your opinions and preferences. There's a survey, again, on the website. It's only five questions long. Please find it and fill it out for us. You'll also find it in the window. Look for it and get your answers in just as soon as you can because we're starting to make plans right now. And now let's just pause and let's take a deep breath. Let the Spirit of God come into our lives as we center ourselves and let's worship. We are trapped.
please join me in the spirit of prayer. God, as we move toward another season of Lent, we ask, how can it be different than this year? How can we open ourselves to your presence and our lives more? What stands in the way of a closer relationship with you, Holy One? May we seek your voice and listen with our hearts as we humbly approach this season. Transforming God, whose light always pierces the darkness and whose love always overcomes hate. We ask that you sustain us as we struggle to make your light visible in an angry and frightened world. Nurture us daily as we work for your justice in unjust places and your peace in places where no peace is to be found. Give us courage and strength when we are fearful and weak. Give us hope and forgiveness when we feel hopeless and angry. And guide us every step of the way as we strive to walk in the light. And we lift into your light and love those who are hurting, lonely, lost. Heal the broken hearts of this world. Let your love pour out over our sisters and brothers who desperately need it, God. And may the love of the living Christ be known through us and among us. And we pray these things in the name of the light of the world, Jesus the Christ, who taught his followers to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the final installment in our series of sermons called Wishing for You in 2021. The title of today's message is, My Wish for You is to be light for the world. Scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. I'll be reading out of the New International Version of the Bible. You are the salt of the earth, says Jesus. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We need light, don't we? I mean, light is important. I don't think it was ever so important to me as one time when I was attending a continuing education conference in Los Angeles, and I decided to save the church some money. And instead of, of, of registering at the fancy hotel where most of the attendees to the conference registered, I found a motel just a few blocks away. It was a lot less expensive. Yes, it was a lot cheaper in a lot of ways. I don't want to say seedy, but... I wondered my first night when I returned to the motel after the afternoon of the conference. I was walking across the parking lot to find my room and I couldn't see the door because the light, the overhead light above the door was out. I finally found where the door was and I had to feel along the door to find the place to insert my key, uh, the, key the keyhole. When I found it, I opened the door, reached inside, and I flipped on the light switch. Nothing happened. No lights went on inside or outside. Nothing at all happened. 
Well, I remembered that afternoon. I'd stopped by the motel and I put my luggage down on the bed. I knew about where the bed was. It was so dark in that room, I couldn't even see the bed. I stumbled around until I found it. I felt down the edge of the bed until there was, I remembered there was a, a, a light stand at the head of the bed. I found the light stand and I felt around the light, the, the lamp the, to, to find the switch to turn it on. Finally found the switch. I flipped it. Nothing happened. Still no light. And that was about the time I began wondering if I should have paid a little more for, <laughs> for my motel room. I thought, well, I don't know where any other lights are here, and I don't know where the switches are and the walls, but I knew where the curtains were. So I thought if I could just open the drapes, maybe some ambient light from outside can come in, and, and just enough that I can find my way around the room and, and find a light switch someplace. So I went to the drapes and felt around. I felt on the right side of the drapes, and I felt over on the left side, and I tried to open them, and they wouldn't open. There were no drawstrings. Now, I really didn't know what to do. Have you ever had days like that? So I stumbled around the room, bumping into furniture, until I came to a desk, felt around on the desk till I found a lamp I turned the switch, and it went on. All was well. I had light. We need light, don't we? I don't know if physical light has ever been so important to me as that particular time. But there's another kind of light that I think is even more vital than physical light, and that's inner light. It's the light that shines from within, a light of love and compassion and, and kindness and, and faith. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And, and, and Jesus needs for us to be light for the world because the world can be dark and, and lonely and confusing. We have a, a painting in our home, which is one of my favorite paintings. Uh, it, it doesn't look like much just to look at it. It's, it's small. It's a little oil painting, very dark, actually. It, it's a painting at dusk or a little bit beyond dusk, early nighttime. And the sky is a very deep blue. It, it shows a, a New Mexican scene. There's a small adobe house, tiny little house. It's next to a dirt road, which is covered with snow. In fact, the whole picture is there's several inches of snow on, on, on everything. And tire tracks through the snow along the road in front of the house. And that's about it. Now, you can tell the moon is shining, not because you see the moon, but because of the shadows in, in the snow. I think the reason I love this painting so much is, is not only is it such a typical, old-fashioned New Mexican scene, but, but because of the house. Now, when you look at the, the little adobe house, there's really nothing to it. It's got a blue door, which is so typical, so many adobe structures in New Mexico. And then there's some chili peppers hanging next to the door. But what really draws your eye is the window. Next to the chili peppers, there's a small square window. You can't see inside, but, but it's yellow and light is emanating from the house. Now, the feeling which I have when I look at this picture is, is I'm, I'm cold all over. I'm in cold. I'm out in the snow. It's nighttime. Um, I'm walking along this dirt road, and, and here is this little house with light coming from the window and a little bit of smoke wafting from the chimney. 
you know that somebody's home and they must be cooking something good or maybe they're seated around the table eating, maybe children are seated on the floor playing or reading books. It's warm and it's inviting, all because there's a little bit of light coming from the window. And my eye is drawn to the light. We are drawn to light, aren't we? Jesus said you are the light of the world. And people will be drawn to your inner light. We're, we're drawn to the light of love and, and, and hope. Because this can be a very dark world. And when we see the love and the hope of other people, we're drawn toward it. I think St. Francis of Assisi got it right when he said, all the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light of a single candle. No, it can't. And no matter how dark the world is, it can't extinguish your light other people will be drawn to that light. Children are drawn to your light. Robert Fulgham once said, don't worry that children never listen to you. Worry that they are always watching you because children are drawn to you. Adults are like beacons to children. Mary Rita Schilke Corzan wrote a, a piece to her granddaughter. I want to share that with you. It's called, When You Thought I Wasn't Looking. This is what she says. When you thought I wasn't looking, you hung my first painting on the refrigerator, and I wanted to paint another. When you thought I wasn't looking, you fed a stray cat. And I thought it was good to be kind to animals. When you thought I wasn't looking, you baked a birthday cake just for me. And I knew that little things were special things. When you thought I wasn't looking, you said a prayer. And I believed there was a God that I could always talk to. When you thought I wasn't looking, you kissed me goodnight. And I felt loved. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw tears come from your eyes. And I learned that sometimes things hurt. But that it's all right to cry. When you thought I wasn't looking, you cared. And I wanted to be everything I could be. When you thought I wasn't looking, I looked. And I wanted to say thanks for all those things you did when you thought I wasn't looking. Children are always looking, watching. They're drawn to the light, your light. Adults are drawn to the light, too. So Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and, and put it under a bowl. You are light. I grew up in a town in New Mexico called Los Alamos. Sometimes we referred to Los Alamos as the hill. That's just what people who lived there called it. They might say, well, I spent the day in Santa Fe today, but I returned to the hill at 6 o'clock. That was our nickname for Los Alamos. When I was a boy, my parents took me to the Santa Fe Opera. They had just finished the new opera house. It was, it was spectacular. It's, it's an open-air structure. A beautiful stage and a roof with open walls. And as we were sitting there waiting for the show to begin, my, my father was looking out the side into the blackness of the night, and he pointed to something. He said, 
look over there. And, and I looked, and all I could see was the, 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 the dark night. It was semi-arid New Mexican desert, and I could hardly even see that. He said, over there in the hills. And, and I looked, and I could see the little bit of mountains far off in the distance. As I looked right where he was pointing, I saw a glow in the sky. He said, that glow is Los Alamos. That was our home. It wasn't a great big town. And we were over 20 miles away in a straight line, but we could see the glow up in the sky of the town. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. People see your light in the darkness. They see your hope. They see your commitments. They see your love and your kindness. They see the difference between you and the darkness that's all around. And, and you see, your job is not to get rid of all the darkness and the evil and the lostness in the world. Your job is to give light. You are a light. You're the light of the world. Rosa Parks was such a light. We remember that she refused to sit down in the front of the bus after a long day's work. She refused to sit down in the back of the bus where she was supposed to sit. And instead, she sat down in the front of the bus because she was tired. She was tired after a long day's work. She was tired of sitting down in the back of the bus every time. She was tired of it all. All of Montgomery watched. All of the world watched and a movement was born. Marion Wright Edelman tells her own granddaughter a story about the funeral procession of Rosa Parks. This is what she says. I want to give it to you in her words. One of the proudest moments in my life was waiting with you, Elika, when you were four years old on the steps of our nation's capital for Mrs. Rosa Parks to arrive. In the beautiful twilight of a perfect day, a bus draped in black symbolizing the Montgomery bus boycott arrived, followed by a hearse carried Mrs. Parks, moving very slowly past very long lines of people circling the capital, waiting to say thanks and farewell to her. As the integrated military honor guard lifted Mrs. Parks up the capital steps in precise cadences towards the rotunda where the President of the United States, leaders of Congress, and other dignitaries awaited her, her, an unassuming black seamstress who had the courage to sit down for justice and make all America stand up. I squeezed you tight and whispered through tears of gratitude, never, ever forget what one committed black woman, one single person can do. Rosa Parks was light. She was a symbol of courage and she let her light shine. People noticed. They watched. Rosa Parks once said, 
Each person must live their life as a model for others. And don't worry that they won't be watching. Oh, they will. They will. Your job is not to rid the world of all the darkness and the evils and the problems and the loneliness. Yes, we do what we can. Your job is to shine because you are the light of the world. One December, I received an email from a woman who lived in Mexico City. She told me about a light that she had just bought for Christmas. I want to share her email with you. She said, yesterday I bought a Christmas decoration. It's a plastic star, maybe 18 inches across, strung with small white and gold Christmas lights. I hung it in my living room window last night. It looks so beautiful from outside, even better than I'd hoped. I live on the second floor of a five-story government housing project building. The building where I live is tucked away where few people go. Not a whole lot of folks see my lighted star. As long as I have it plugged in, that star shines bravely and brightly out to the cold night. It shines on regardless of whether anyone is around to see it or not. And I know that anyone who does see it must be heartened by it. It's that lovely. Then she ends the email with this observation. I got to thinking, isn't that the way we should be? Shouldn't our lives in some way shine out into the cold night, regardless of whether or not anyone admires them? It's certainly nice when someone notices us and is encouraged or hardened. But after all, isn't it the shining itself that is most important? Yes, it is the shining that is most important. So let your light shine. May you be a beacon of hope to a world so desperately in need of hope. May you be inspiration and courage to a world that feels disheartened. May you be strength to anyone who needs encouragement to go on. Will you let your light shine. As writer Anne Lamott says, lighthouses don't go running all over an island looking for boats to save. They just stand there shining. My wish for you is to be a light for the world. Amen. <laughs>
Now go now in the peace of God and be the light of the world. Amen. Well, today is Valentine's Day for all you lovers and sweethearts. You can sing along right there in your own home and you won't look like a fool. Let's do Let Me Call You Sweetheart. Let me call you sweetheart. 